So where we left off at the last lecture was um, a position like this. We bound our mesh to the uh, to the bones, and uh, we're about to go testing. On the right hand side, we have a a number of labelled joints. So, and each one of these, in, when you've got the painted weights tool active, will tell you which parts of the mesh are being influenced by which joint. So, for example, I've just selected left shoulder. That uh, even though it's the left shoulder, which is highlighted in light blues there, it is affecting all of that region, just behind, around, around the um, the lats, uh, and it's moving all of that which was white, indicated by white in the painted weights tool on the mesh. So the best way to go about painting weights, I find, is that when you as you set keyframes, uh, so what you would do is you'd You'd set a keyframe, move the arm to ex its extreme poses, and you'd scan through the timeline, and then you'd see how it's being affected. And that way, we can see uh, how much influence the mesh is having on those painted weights. So I've keyframed on the first frame and on the last frame. I know the extreme poses are going to be as far forward and far back as this. So I'd like to just know if the mesh uh, deformations hold at these points. So you can see I'm just scanning through the line, the timeline, going forwards and backwards, and um, I'm going to make adjustments to the uh, painted weights deformations now. <clears throat> so scanning through the timeline is a very useful way of doing it. Obviously, you're just gonna bring it back to its last, its first pose. Just copying the keyframes. So now it will go forwards and backwards, and return to its normal place. It's always a good idea for that. You always want your joints to be in its default position. So now I'm gonna scan, just highlighting out, just involving the four under um, the elbow here. I'm gonna bend the keyframe it, shift a few frames up keyframe it again and then shift it all the way back to its furthest extreme pose which will be about here there we go and I'll keyframe that as well I'm just keyframing by pressing S for those of you who are not familiar with animation keyframes that keyframes the rotations now I'm literally just copying and pasting certain keyframes so now it will return back to its normal pose when I scan through the timeline you can see there's those deformations around the body and not quite correct. So we're gonna to have to go in and adjust that manually. Select the mesh and select the bone which you wish to influence. You see the shoulder bone is right there where the shoulder is, but it's affecting the entire bit around the the body there. We don't want any of that. We just want the shoulder to affect the, jo the joint around the shoulder. Now the values I typically like to use, I like to add and uh, have a min and max value of minus one and plus one on the brush. So I'm going to go in just just experiment really. Uh, I like to keep these values rather low so I'm reducing now here I'm actually lowering or changing to the clavicle joint now. But I can see the clavicle joint is now reducing, I'm going to increase the influence on that. Just painting the weights here, increasing the influence that the clavicle joint will have on this entire region. Just go in, tweak as you feel necessary. I feel that that, that bit, you see the clavicle is not actually moving at all here. So sometimes you actually don't want, you're adding influence to reduce motion. See the, the vertebrae is the, the joint right in the middle over there and that would rarely be moving relative to the to the arm. So we want it we want those points to stay where they are. So that's why I'm painting weights. So I'm saying this should these verts should be affected only by the vertebrae five bone. So in effect, I'm telling it not to move when I move the arm. So it's an important concept there. 
you're not just painting weights to say which bits move with moving joints but which which parts of the mesh should not be moving at all when other joints move so I go back to my clavicle joint I can see there's quite a lot of quite a lot of influence happening there so I'm just trying to just even that out a bit here and just experiment okay back to the vertebrae 5 I can see that um, on the shoulder, see the shoulder is now still affecting a lot of things now each vert can um, have an influence from I think uh, 0 to plus 1 from any set of joints so what I'm doing here is I'm just completely removing the influence of the shoulder around that region and I notice the, the mesh does get a bit funky here but that's okay we can another way I, I really like to work is when things like this start happening look inside the mesh as well make sure th there's no anomalies there either you, this bit by the shoulder should not be affecting any of this so I'm, I'm d reducing it to minus one so effectively every every bit there will go to zero every influence that the shoulder would have on those verts will go to zero you can see a rogue vert there doing what it wants to do but hopefully we'll address that in a second see that entire bit's moving and I think what I would want to do is go to the uh, shoulder, uh, not the shoulder, the um, back vert 5 which is again central here and I want to really bump up, I'm going to bump up the influence because I really don't want any of this stuff to be moving so I'm going to increase this here Oops, silly me, got my value on 0, that's not going to help I'm going to bump up the, the value quite high so it's now increasing this means you know you'll be uh, decreasing actually the influence that the shoulder the clavicle will have all these um, influences they are like a a ratio you know from one to zero how much of it is going to be influenced by a certain joint now I really don't want any of these to be moving because of the clavicle or the shoulder so I'm heavily increasing the influence that the stationary vert 5 will be having on these bits so I'm just bumping it up here and now this is back to the clavicle you know I do want the clavicle to have influence here but I definitely don't want any shoulder to be having any influence here so when I go to the shoulder notice how a lot of that upper part has been reduced a lot yeah, you can see like, the vertebrae I'm going to bump, up, bump it up here you see how those verts in mid animation is on frame 2 how they're going back to the right places that's the advantage of using animation keyframes to uh, help in this part of the process I really don't want any of these bits to move so I'm making them attach to the vert 5 vertebrae 5 which won't move that much see how less it's all moving because the arms are having less influence the shoulders having less influence and so is the um, shoulder and the clavicle joint which I've made I really want these bits to be a, a mix of clavicle and vertebrae 5 so that's why I'm increasing these because they rarely move that much what I'm going to do here is go right down to minus 1 I don't want any of that to be influenced by the clavicle because that's nowhere near the clavicle you see that white region there that needs to go hopefully getting slightly better results go back to the shoulder still affecting bits under there which I don't want so I'm going to go to the clavicle increase silly me I'm reducing it now I need to push it up right back up that's right and um, paint heavily there you notice that the vertebrae is having less influence on it now but that region is now being influenced by the vertebrae and the clavicle not hopefully the shoulder when I go back to the shoulder in a second you see that that won't be influencing the by the shoulder which is virtually the arm movement see how that's reduced heavily now because of that so sometimes it's better not to reduce the shoulder shoulder influences uh, here 
it's actually better to go to stationary bones and increase the influence that they would have because Maya by default if you remove influence will actually um, just kind of figure out try and figure out what you want to do which it just never does right see now the shoulder has no influence there and it's now just a mix between the clavicle and the clavicle and the vertebrae 5 not the shoulder so this elbow it's not good it's influencing things under the body we don't want any of that so put the um, value right down to minus 1 go inside the body get all those verts remember no it's just the verts it's telling how much each vert is influenced so again move away from the idea that the mesh is just this continuous thing um, and that they are actually just a set of points so you know, just the shoulder had a rogue vert there remember what I said about um, removing influence can be not always the best way to increasing the influence in certain regions is sometimes a good way of approaching these problems again just scanning through not getting better results here you know, the clavicle, now the shoulder is just affecting mostly the arm the clavicle is affecting the region slightly around the arm now I'm just going to tweak fine tweak these things there's a bit there which needs needs not be influenced by the shoulder clavicle or the shoulder sorry reduce the brush size you can reduce the brush size by pressing B and uh, clicking the size of the radius by dragging the left mouse button the left or right will increase and decrease the size of the brush now back to just slightly tweaking things I want this fold here to work a lot better than it is right now so that's why I'm giving the clavicle a bit more influence here see this region I want just clavicle and the shoulder joint which is highlighted in blue right now, now it's the shoulder joint I want those two things to be influencing these regions I want it to be a mix between those two rather than the uh, vertebrae 5 which may have somehow by default been set to affect those again just smoothing these out sometimes it's a good idea I'm using add but sometimes if you smooth it also uh, it smooths out the uh, the verts influence influences take two sets of influences or more and try and even them out a bit so you can use smooth which is on the right there see the um, arm is actually not too bad when you go to the far end of the time scale and uh, a really important part of uh, of the animation which you've done is to view the edge looping now those of you who are um, have a modeling background will know about what, what the, the edge flow sorry I think is what it's referred to as you want the edge flow of your mesh to always be uh, regular and good you want most of your contours to follow in a nice way <clears throat> You don't want uh, sharp, jaggedy edges. See here, I'm trying to get that that edge loop which goes around the body to always be flowing nicely. So what I'm just trying to affect here, smoothing out certain things here. You can smooth that by pressing the shift key. By the way, that's a shortcut. So when you're clicking, clicking, you press shift click it will smooth out the vert's influences one problem with this I found also though is that um, uh, with smoothings that if you undo sometimes my doesn't actually take it back to the last last um, thing it doesn't calculate correctly the influences on each vert because there's a lot, of, a lot of information going into that and I don't think Maya really likes that it doesn't quite restore it when you press undo but 
That being said, I think we've got a fairly good result here now, so far.